Howdy folks and welcome back to the channel for a brand new series looking at my favourite mods from Project Zomboid. I'll be taking a look at some of my favourite mods that I've been trying out over the last couple of months, whether it's mods as big as new maps or just quality of life mods built to make life a little easier for you. If you enjoy the video or find some new mods to try on your playthroughs, consider dropping the video a like. It really does help get the video in front of more people and of course you can subscribe for more Project Zomboid tips guides and gameplay. So let's get into it. The mods from this video range from about May to August of 2022 with one or two exceptions. Now to kick things off I wanted to open with one of my favourite mods that I just haven't been able to stop using over the last couple of months and that's the 10 years later mod from Dane. It was released on June 13th and this mod has taken the Steam Workshop by storm with over 44,000 current subscribers. If you ever wanted to see a post-apocalyptic version of Kentucky covered in foliage and overgrowth, reminiscent of games like The Last of Us, this is absolutely the mod for you. As a recommendation, pair it with Barricaded World, the Trash and Corpses mod, and the 10 years later Cars and Wrecks mod for the real forgotten wasteland experience. Next up is a brand new map to Project Zomboid, which we're actually running over on our Patreon server this month called Chastown. This was released on the 27th of July by Poopmans, who I'm sure is having a good giggle about the fact that I've had to read his name out loud if they're watching this. Chestown is a relatively small but densely packed town sitting just south of Riverside. Despite the smaller size, this map gives me the same vibes as Raven Creek, with tall apartment buildings complete with fire escapes and suburban housing offering an abundance of safe house opportunities. Now whilst we're looking at modded maps, there's another worth checking out that was released on June 2nd called Rabbit Hash by Aragon. This small riverside town sits between West Point and Riverside along the main river, complete with a general store, a small trailer park and a rural chapel. And whilst it's not the largest of map add-ons either, it fills a gap between two of the main towns and helps the world feel a little bit more fleshed out. And if you're planning to check out either of these two map mods, there's a quality of life mod that might be great for you. The draw on the map mod by Notlock, released on May 6th, is a fantastic little addition that I'm sure many of us have been after and I'm sure you're definitely not going to draw suggestive shapes and I'm sure you're not that immature are you? Phallic drawings aside, this mod is also compatible with the map symbol size slider mod, more map symbols and many more, all of which are shown on their workshop page. Another mod that Notlock has worked on in conjunction with Mr. Sunshine and Spyjack is the Susceptible Trait Airborne Infection mod. This mod adds the Susceptible Negative Trait for plus 11 points, putting your character at risk of contracting the Airborne Nox infection when near zombies. In order to survive, and this is something we've been practicing extensively over the last few years, you'll need to wear some sort of mask. Everything from cloth bandanas to gas masks and hazmat suits will protect you, but only up to a maximum number of zombies in your proximity. Any more than that, and you risk infection. Your mask of choice will need to be maintained to keep you infection free, all of which is explained in depth on the mod Steam Workshop page. For those that feel they've conquered Project Zomboid, this is the mod for you. It adds a new challenge and a constant threat to your game, so mask up and try not to breathe in that bad air. Moving on to smaller but definitely no less effective mods, we've got more starting locations by Bingus Respector, published on July 4th. This mod does exactly what it says on the tin, adding more starting locations to the vanilla map. These new spawns give you the option of March Ridge, Akron or Valley Station, so if you've been playing Project Zomboid for a little while now and only stuck to those main towns, this could be one to add to your next playthrough. Next up I wanted to take a look at a clothing mod I've discovered recently that could complement a bunch of other mods that I've mentioned in this video so far. The Stalker Armor Pack by Kind Peace, published on July 7th. This mod does exactly what it says on the tin as well, adding clothing from all of the factions found in the zone. There's a total of a whopping 81 outfits and 64 headpieces, including the three vanilla games outfits and outfits from the popular 
popular Stalker Anomaly mod. Everything from rookie outfits to exoskeletons are available, and with a bunch of other mods out there adding various items from the Stalker franchise, I can see a fair few playthroughs starting up built to emulate this fan favourite survival game. Unfortunately, we don't have a finished map of the zone just yet, but the most promising at the moment seems to be the zone by D-Man, so I'll keep an eye on this one going forward. Now, whilst we're on the topic of cosmetic items, a slightly smaller mod that I'd always recommend is the Open Jackets mod by Spongy, which was published on May 25th. With this mod, all vanilla jackets can now be opened. Spongy has some other mods out there as well and does some fantastic cosmetic stuff in general, so give them a look too whilst you're at it. Another one of our smaller quality of life mods, the Backpack Borders mod by Notlock, published on May 15th, fixes an issue that I've seen all too often in my own runs. If you've ever been running a backpack of dark colouring, it can often blend in with the inventory panel and make it difficult to see. With this mod, a simple background and border is added to each container you're using, making them much easier to see and distinguish. If you've ever wanted to see a working, bartering and economy system in Project Zomboid, the next mod on the list today will definitely interest you. Published on July 25th, Noir's mod Shops has created its own currency system and working stationary shops that can be used for trading between both players and stands created by server admins. The possibilities with this one are pretty extensive if you take into account that we've got a big patch coming in the near future that will make building of custom structures so much easier for server admins. I'm looking forward to using this for myself on our server in the future and what other players might make with this system. Whilst I haven't got any vehicle mods for you in this particular video, I do have a handy little quality of life mod for when you're playing co-op with your buddies. The mod You Drive I Sleep by Chuckleberry Finn, published on the 4th of July, is a must-have for small parties running sleep on their playthrough. Let your friend take the wheel and cozy up in the back for a quick nap. Okay, so I said we had no vehicle mods. I did sort of lie with that one. Whilst it doesn't add vehicles to the game in itself, the mod RV Interior is a really interesting little mod to try if you like the idea of living life on the road as a nomad. Move into the back seat of an RV, caravan or bus and then leave your seat to enter a simulated environment of the vehicle itself. Why claim a safe house when you can have your perfect home on the road? Each vehicle has its own specially designed interior so you can get creative with any number of roaming bases. Now if you're out and about trying to communicate to other survivors you may already know that using radios requires it to be in your hand. Well, not anymore. With the mod Keep That Radio On by Mr. Grey, you can leave your radio open and active whilst going about your business in case any incoming messages come through. Great for the immersive player that prefers not to use outside communication like Discord or TeamSpeak. Last on our list today, and by certainly no means least, is one for the burger flippers amongst us. Saf's cooking mod released on July 8th offers a plethora of food, drink, and even some new weapons to try. All in all, the mod adds 20 new drinks, a whopping 50 new food recipes, 20 new types of food spawns, and five new weapons like the meat tenderizer and steel ladle. With this mod, you can make everything from Japanese chicken curry to schnitzels and garlic bread. Strap up your apron and get to work because there's a lot to discover in this mod jam-packed with culinary delights. So that's it from me in this one, but if you have some suggestions or mods that you've found recently, new or old, drop them in the comments section below. Half of the fun with Project Zomboid is adding mods to your playthrough, so let's get some attention for the mods that deserve it. Special thank you to all of my existing patrons for their support and for joining me on the whitelisted Project Zomboid server, and as always, there's a link in the description if you want to come and join them. Thanks folks, and I will see you all in the next one.